Okay. All right. We are recording, and welcome to PacWest Bigfoot. This is David, and i uh, got a good friend, uh, Greg, on here. And he's going to be sharing sighting of his mother's uh, that he had and uh, his own experiences um, yeah. out in the woods in North America. And real quick, just so you guys know, um, <laughs> been really busy, uh, sick kids, um, kind of lame, dry heaving, fevers, you name it, uh, going through right. that kind of spell right now at the very beginning of the school year. Um, but mm -hmm. here's the deal. I've decided to move the um, giveaways every month up to um, basically the uh, uh, 11th of 10th or 11th of every month. So I'll be introducing that uh, this Monday, the winners of this week's free giveaway for September. And um, <clears throat> don't forget, that is actually a coffee mug. It's a print by Sarah Bergman and also I've got something special for the winner as well um, a little something from uh, a friend of mine and I will introduce that uh, next week so anyways um, let's get into this week's um, uh, interview and uh, Greg so wh where are you from man uh, I'm in middle of California uh, almost dead center, uh, Turlock, uh, big town of Turlock, you know. Oh, I know Turlock. And, uh, I've been to Turlock. Yep. Oh, yeah, yes. Yeah. yeah. We, uh, 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 those of us in Turlock, we, we were kind of almost sometimes afraid to admit it because we're so close to Majesto, you know. You got, you know, uh, <laughs> Scott Peterson and, you know, and I the used Sandra to go to Levy Stockton and Modesto like <laughs> every week over to Santa Rosa and Sacramento and Link was it Lincoln City, whatever that place. I don't know. All the way out there anyway, so. So yeah, um, yeah. you had, your mother had um, a really awesome visual reciting um, when yeah. she was younger, and then you've had some mm -hmm. sounds, vocalizations, and stuff doing your own research, I, I take it. Um, why don't you go mm -hmm. ahead and just dive in first, start with your mom's, um, you know, encounter, and uh, let's just go from there. Yeah. Okay, yeah, it was my mother, so, you know, thank God she's still with us. She just turned 90. Oh, but back in nineteen, yeah. <laughs> uh, so back in nineteen thirty-five ish, um, her uh, her dad, my grandfather, who's who's gone now, was uh, a World War One vet. Actually, mm -hmm. uh, he was off still uh, in uh, reserve, and so they had a farm. They raised sweet potatoes and so on. So they had a a big layout uh, back in, in the valley in Santa Maria. Mm. And which is just north of uh, uh, the Air Force Base. It's there. Uh, I can't think of the name of it for the moment. Um, anyhow, it was a full moon, and uh, it was just her, uh, her mother, and uh, she has uh, several siblings, mm -hmm. uh, uh, three older brothers, and uh, a sister. And it was, uh, you know, early in the evening yet yeah, because everybody was still awake. And uh, they only had one dog, a uh, pretty good dog, and uh, he was really angry, barking, but he wouldn't leave the yard like he would any other time that there was something amiss. And uh, so that really got their attention, you know, what could this be? And, and so my uh, uncle, who actually is still with us as well, it's the only one left, uh, grabbed a shotgun. And uh, my uncle Johnny, who's, who was a World War II vet, who's, who's left us now. Uh, went out with a 22, but all, all everybody went outside and they just walked into the yard area and uh, just looked in the direction that the dog was barking. And uh, like I said, it was full moon, so the hillside uh, to their east was well lit, mm. and they saw a gigantic silhouette at the top of the mountain. So walking basically from the right down to the left. Uh, down this hillside towards this creek and uh, they were all pretty startled as far as what they were seeing because you know it was just a silhouette it was dark but uh, the moon was bright enough to where they can kind of make out what they couldn't believe what they were seeing really and as this uh, uh, Bigfoot got down to the uh, pump house that was right there and the pump house basically is about the size of the uh, your traditional outhouse uh, it was uh, covered with uh, corrugated sheet metal. And uh, as it got close to that, which is actually the closest point that it got to them, 
uh, my uncle Joe fired off a, a shot from the shotgun and they heard it just whap, you know, into the, into the sheet metal on the, on that pump house. Mm-hmm. And it, uh, it turned and it turned away from them and actually crossed the Creek. And, and, uh, you know, that was basically the extent of, of their encounter with the exception of the goosebumps they had to deal with because they had never seen anything like this before. And, mm-hmm. uh, and also yeah. in 1935, there wasn't really a whole lot uh, spoken about that. So this is really very new for them. Uh, yeah. So consequently, in the, yeah, consequently in the morning, they uh, investigated that area and they found these monstrous prints. And uh, upon looking at them, that was uh, if they were to put two of their feet side by side, that's basically the width. And they can yes. almost get a foot end to end inside of it. So uh, it, it was a monster. All right. Jeez. And uh, that was the only encounter they ever had. And, and uh, my only suspicion would be because they raised sweet potatoes is that maybe he was looking down to get a, you know, an evening snack or something like that. And, and, but uh, that was basically the end of that. And they had wild boar running around that area too. Cause uh, my mother had a story about where she, she was uh, a daddy's girl. And, and uh, even at the age of nine years old, she would go out and help her dad, uh, you know, load sweet potatoes and so on like that. So oh, it was nice. uh, funny, funny to eat other than animals around there. Huh. But, uh, that's pretty much the, the end of that. So, you know, hearing that story growing up, it uh, not only for me, but for my siblings, you know, we, we, we kind of had a, an open mind about that because mm-hmm. she had no reason to lie about that. You know, it's, it's, uh, I don't think the crazy ism is as bad as it used to be mm-hmm. uh, because there's so many toes like yourself, you know, that, that uh, spent a lot of time talking about this. And, yeah. you know, so, uh, but later on in life, um, my dad had uh, bought a fifth wheel camper. So you know, this is in, I think it was in 1976 when he had bought that. And so we enjoyed a lot of camping too. Uh, it helped us to get away from the ranch that we lived on. And uh, uh, we would end up at Kennedy Meadows, which is along, I, I remember right, somewhere between 108, 120, uh, Highway 108 and 120 as you go uh, east into the Sierra Nevada mountain range. And it's, it's fairly high up. And uh, we never really thought much about it, but it seemed like that every time we went camping in this area mm-hmm. that we would hear what I know today is a, as wood knocks. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we thought, well, maybe somebody's chopping wood for their fire, but we always found it odd. So why were they only split two pieces? You know, because normally, you know, about half a dozen pieces or more would end up in the fire to stay up until midnight or so. Yeah. And we would only hear two knocks. And, uh, and so that led me to now, in retrospect, it leads me to believe that uh, it's probably Bigfoot wood knocks, not somebody cut wood, because it didn't have that same type of sound as, as wood splitting. Mm-hmm. And uh, also, too, uh, we would hear rock clacks, you know, just two rocks just knocked together like so. And, you know, after about the second event like that, second, second uh, camping trip is, is uh, you know, uh, early teen boys, you know, uh, evil one once, you know, uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, how that can be, you know, we, we try to mimic that. And, and so we, without smashing our fingers together, you know, we, we, uh, we would do that. And every once in a while we, we, we get some sort of response out of it. But, uh, as you well know, uh, anytime you try to invoke a response like that, it's very short lived. And that was also our experience, uh, with that. And I remember particularly, uh, there was a little bit, it wasn't getting as cold in the evening, but it's still well into the summer. Uh, I wanted to sleep outside in my sleeping bag. I love the fresh air, you know, and uh, my two, I have a, a younger sibling is two years younger and one that's 15 months older. And so, yeah, great idea. We'll sleep around the fire. And um, I had, uh, wasn't, didn't quite know what it was, but I had a really horrible feeling come over me one night and uh, I, I thought I can hear steps around me and, and uh, oh boy, my heart beat so so hard. I'm surprised you couldn't hear it. You know, it just really scared the crap out of me. Yeah. And, uh, you know, of course I, I had my sleeping bag zipped over my head at that point because it, it, it got cool enough to where my face was starting to get numb. <laughs> and 
it, it lasted just for a short while. And, uh, and then I started to kind of come out of that and wondered what it was and unslipped my sleeping bag. And of course it's, you know, in the woods that they get pretty dark at night. I, I couldn't really hear anything. And, uh, I elected to sleep actually underneath the trailer the following night uh, <laughs> because I, I I just felt safer that way. My dad thought that was really strange, and you know, I wasn't about to tell him what what I was experiencing because I would only automatically be considered nutty. Uh-huh. So, uh, in fact, my my kid brother uh, he wasn't having it. He slept inside the trailer the the following evening. So, uh, um, <laughs> did he but, tell uh, him what was going no on? <laughs> Well, you know, he he must have suspected something too, and and the thing of it is, you run around at night with flashlights and stuff, and you you get shadows around trees, and you know your mind kind of plays tricks on you, and it, it you can, know, and it we can. were probably it, it, it did that when we were kids camping because we camped a lot, and uh, you know we were always taking flashlights out there, running around, you know, within about fifty, sixty yards of the camp, and yeah, so yeah, you yeah. can freak yourself out sometimes. So. Sure can, sure can. You know, of course, you spend time running down the. There was a creek that was that was nearby, and and uh, we got a little bit far away uh, one afternoon, and <laughs> it's really hilarious right now. But we we uh, ran across this gigantic turd, <laughs> if I can say that. Use that. Term. Yeah, yeah, no. And you fine. know, <laughs> <laughs> and you know, this thing was the uh, you know the size of two water bottles end to end, you know, and about the same. Girth, per se and and uh we just like you know of course you know 11 12 13 year olds you know we had a pretty good time laughing about that you know poke it with a stick you know and yeah about how no thick do you think it was <laughs> what about like diameter thickness like oh it was like you know two and a half inches at, at minimum i would say you know i was thinking it's about the size of a pepsi can in in, in its diameter Jeez. you know so pretty you know but, you know, we poked around at it. You know, like I said, growing up on a ranch, you know, we used to find uh, owl dung in the barn. And, uh, you know, if you broke it up, sometimes you can find like a mouse skull yeah, inside yeah, yeah. of it. You know, little yeah, cage, owl pellets. You know, in fact, owl pellets yeah. are awesome, man. We, we've, we, still, we still find those around here quite often here in the Pacific Northwest. So, yeah. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. In fact, I, I, I saved the, the – uh, a mouse skull and I even even found the jawbone and I, I kept that in my room for a while and my mom threw it out because it was stinking up the house. But uh that was, yeah. <laughs> but you know like about the like the owl dung is is that uh, we, we poked at it, you know, because uh, there was some evidence of some sort of hair or something in there and, and uh mm. you know that kind of thing and, and seeds. Uh I don't know where the berries would have come from. It seemed like there were some seeds in it other than that. It was just sporadic, you know, here mm. and there but yeah it's uh so uh we didn't spend a whole lot of time with it we spent more time laughing about it than anything else mm-hmm. but uh it's uh, basically it just looked like human you know it just huge Jeez. um so yeah anyhow but you know it, and also too we, we would find strange tree breaks uh as we got deeper and of course you, you start getting too far off the beaten path and then we were always afraid of not being able to find our way back so it was mm-hmm. uh, a very unique area that's pretty well populated anymore. Uh, you know, obviously, you know, 40 years later. So, and I, I actually, we went up there three times and I've never been back since. So I, I don't know what, what to expect up there now. Mm-hmm. So. Interesting. But, uh, yeah. Yeah. You know, that's kind of, you know, all of that is, you know, yeah, it's circumstantial. You can say someone can make that argument. You know, but but as far as the wood knock and the clacks, the rock clacks, and and uh, you know, a little period of fright in the evening. You know, you know, mm-hmm. sure, you could do that. But I've resolved to to uh, determine that all that all of that is is consistent with the Bigfoot activity. So uh, I'm not afraid to admit that. <laughs> you know, what we were seeing is 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 uh could very well be you know bigfoot related yeah so uh but uh but other than that uh it's been years and years since uh anything had happened but basically forgot about it until 2002 hmm. 
I was in North Carolina. Now, David, I, I spent hours upon hours trying to find this particular site where, where the sighting was. Uh, the only thing I can tell you is about uh, 30 minutes north of North, north uh, Wilkesboro, North Carolina, which is uh, basically in between Asheville and, uh, oh, there's another, uh, it, it's going to end up being in, in the um, northwestern corner of North Carolina. And there's a mountain range that, that runs through there uh, parallel with the Smoky uh, Mountain Range that's, uh, you know, not real real high elevation, but there's uh, some very pretty deep uh, uh, valleys or, or uh, you know, running through there. Mm -hmm. So anyhow, what it was is uh, now if anybody's listening and, could, and is familiar with this particular area, there was a church on um it would be the east side of the road with a, a fairly large uh cemetery uh with it and uh where i had stayed that particular day there was a motor a mobile home that was on the hillside just north of the of the church mm -hmm. now when you cross the road there's a creek opposite of the road and there was a little uh, uh well it ended up being a fire trail and so the old wooden uh, bridge going across there, and you make a left, and you start kind of going up that this hillside, and then it starts to turn and go right hand up the hill. And there was a wrecking yard over to the left. There was a meadow on the left side, which I found really awkward, a wrecking yard directly across from from a cemetery and a church. But nevertheless, I was uh, actually, when I was going up that hill, I was uh, in some deep prayer, spending some time with the Lord. And uh, so it was, it was nice to get away of a little bit of that solitude and spend some time in a quiet area. It's very quiet, too, which was uh, almost distracting in a sense. Mm -hmm. And uh, as I made my way almost to the top, I heard a rustling at the top of the hill, which I was only maybe 30 foot from being to the crest of the top, to my right. And then it just hook off i mean this thing was on fire it was i mean the speed this thing was moving was incredible and the thing of it is is i, I was really it didn't sound like you know you know what deer sound like and it had a little bit yeah. of a galloper you know and uh you hear two steps at a time per se and uh the all the there was a lot of uh dry leaves and on the on the hillside so very clearly you can hear but it just didn't sound right, and in that, it went. It moved about seventy-five yards, and uh, towards the end of where I stopped hearing the running, is I heard this tree snap or a, a branch snap, a good-sized branch too. By the side of it, you know, I would say probably this size, something like that. Uh, this is about three inches across, and uh, it just snap, and it was silent, and. Uh, I was really puzzled with what I was hearing, so I just started to walk again. And as I got closer to the top, I got this crawl that came over me. It just totally consumed me. Uh. And I, I, you know, and it's, I'm getting goosebumps now just thinking about it. And and uh, I immediately I looked, I checked my six. You know, somebody's coming up behind me on on this road. Nobody there. Nobody walking around watching me out in the wrecking yard or nothing like that, which in retrospect is really kind of scary because all the activity was to my right, not my left. And I was, you know, naked as the day I was born. I felt anyway because uh, I had no firearm. I was right out in the open, and I had no idea what it was that was watching me. And so what I did is I just looked to the area where I figured – you know, the direction where the running had stopped and I just scanned over to my right and, uh, which is something I was used to doing. I, I do a lot of varmint hunting and you, 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 you basically, you're watching for the smallest amount of movement. And, uh, as I got exactly perpendicular where I was standing, I, I made something out that was totally out of place. There were, now what there was is there was two pine trees that were only about a foot apart. 
and there was some underbrush that was, you know, shrouding the base of the tree. And I, in between the tree, I saw a head. Now, there's a lot of people that say, oh, they have a cone head. This dude did not have a cone head. It was about as round as, well, it appeared to be about as round as a basketball. Mm. The size, size of that, too. Um, and it was the same color as the tree bark. Now, the thing that was crazy is, is you know, immediately, oh, okay, maybe we got a bear here. No, this was no bear. You know, I've seen bears' eyes are more towards the side in what would be our temple area. These eyeballs were right in the front, and they were about, you know, six, seven inches apart, maybe even eight inches. You know, it's, he was about 80 feet away from me, mm-hmm. and just as still as you can be, And uh, but he was out of place. And all the the thing I, I really regret is, is, you know, the brush was hiding them except from about the nose up. But I can clearly see eyeballs that were really dark, uh, you know, a good contrast to the color of the, his hair. And uh, I just stood and I stared at it. Now, I've had, a, you know, even on your show, Dave, people saying, oh, you're not supposed to look at them, you know, that'll piss them off and, mm-hmm. and so on like that. But I stared right at this thing and it took me probably five, 10 seconds before I realized that what I was seeing was a Sasquatch. Mm-hmm. And, uh, oh man. <laughs> how far you know, away were you again? Is, How far away was He was probably of 80 feet max. Jeez. You know, so if this guy wanted me, as you know, what he demonstrated his speed, he could have had me. I had no doubt in my mind. You know, I just, it made me think that he was probably more curious about me than anything else. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, I had a, I had a, it was, it was about 45, 50 degrees that day, sunny, but it was still chilly with a breeze. So I had this uh, uh, leather jacket on, it was a brown leather jacket. And so maybe that's one thing that, you know, I don't know, maybe it has something to do with it. I don't know. Mm-hmm. And uh, anyhow, and so once I realized what I was looking at, I said, well, you know, that's it for me. And then right back down the hill I went. And uh, I listened intently to see if he was going to follow. And uh, he didn't do that. Uh, I heard a little bit of a rustle, but it wasn't enough to, to make me start running. Yeah. You know, but, uh, you know, the thing that probably in retrospect that, that really chilled me the most was the fact that, you know, yeah, he ran away, he got out of sight, and then went around the back side, you know, off on the off the, the back side of the other opposite side of the crown of the hill there, mm-hmm. and uh, he, he flanked me, you know. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, yeah. It's, it's... <laughs> <laughs> Looking for that sheet metal uh, outhouse? <laughs> Where can I hide? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I, I had nowhere to go. I mean, I, I guess I, I could have just ran down to the wrecking yard, but, you know, like I said, as, as fast as I knew that guy could move, yeah, this, I, there wasn't anything I could do, you know. And uh, No, no. You know, it, it's, uh, it's, it's something that I, I believe Native Americans um, spoke about a lot, about not looking at them and things like that, coming back to that. Um, Mm -hmm. you know, I think it's for like any wild animal. I mean, when you see wild animal, you kind of look away, you know what I mean? It's like, don't look directly at it because it could Mm -hmm. sense something. It might, okay. It noticed, you know, that person's noticing me, I'm noticing it. I'm going to protect myself. But if you were to like, just not look and slowly move, go by or just stand still and just be, you know, just seem like you're harmless then yeah. you know that's yeah that's kind of what i believe you know well yeah and that's that's true there's there's people that'll tell you to, to uh if, if you suspect there there may be a you know a loose dog that may attack you is is to okay realize where they're at and just keep moving you know don't look mm. keep looking back at them because there may be you yeah. know maybe seen as a threat well, what do you do when it's so. flanking you <laughs> Yeah, you know, it's just like this is this Bigfoot went to military school or something, you know, he knew yeah. exactly how to handle that one. <laughs> well, yeah, or maybe he was just kind of escorting you away or making sure that you were you were gonna leave or you know, forcing you to leave in a way. Mm-hmm. So Yeah. Yeah, so it's uh you know, I then 
thinking about it time and again, I, I there's all these other encounters that I've heard or read about, and you know, it's full body. You know, they they seen the the entire creature, and uh, there's a lot of different ways. That, you know, I wish I could have my experience could have been different, but. I think a lot of those people who seen those encounters, you know, they had encounters like that would mm. say, "Oh no, you're lucky to end up with what you had." And and uh, yeah, I, I don't know I mean, that I can argue you much basically about it. now. What part of did you see again? The head and the yeah, basically this this uh, right across uh, from about the right middle here. of the nose, the bridge of the nose up. Okay. Yeah. Now I don't know if you uh, you seen that picture. I sent you a picture that looks very very close to. Uh, Oh, what I had seen. I spent some time on on the internet trying. Yeah, to I saw that picture. in there, and I'm gonna I'm gonna share that on Facebook when I share this out, so everybody gets a gets to see that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The only yeah, thing I that was different about Darryl, that, Daryl. He, uh, not to interrupt, but friend Daryl uh, lives out here close to me. Um, he did an interview, and he got I got some pictures. He got a snapshot of it, the sun kind of shining off its dark head, reflecting from the black, you know, and. And you can see these inset dark like eyes right there and nose mouth and just this like apish apish silhouette of a face, you know, with just dark sections because it was so bright right there. You know? Mm. Mm -hmm. It was it was pretty intense. Yeah. I was like, What in the world? So yeah, <laughs> it freaked me out. I was like, Man, that's not far away from me. <laughs> Right. So. Yeah, and I, and I know uh, I'm not going to use any names, but you know, I'm, I know that the Finding Bigfoot uh, television program. You know, there's there's guys that are argue. Well, you know, they they, they always got a cone shaped head, and it's like, well, I don't know. I hate to differ with you, dude, but this one was not like that. I think it can maybe differ. towards the back. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah. I mean, we all look different. I don't look like you, after all. <laughs> no, uh -uh. You know? no, no, no. I've seen some pretty cone-shaped head people. Uh, <laughs> 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 no, I mean, but, you know, for the most part, I mean, heads are shaped a little bit different. I, I think, you know, like some people believe there's four or five species and they include like dogmen and that, stuff like that. Me, I kind of believe that there's, you've got that kind of Patterson-Gimlin kind of thing. And then you've got, right. you know, your skunk ape. And, you mm -hmm. know, maybe possibly, um, you know, just, yeah, you don't say genetics with people. It's just a little bit different, you know, here. It's just different, mm -hmm. you know. Some have a cone-shaped head, some don't. Some are more, you know, shaped that way than others. I mean, it could really be anything, or it could be a skunk ape itself. So, mm -hmm. who knows, you know. Right. And I have saw, seen uh, a pretty... Well, yeah, exactly, and, and yeah. Uh, uh, I'd argue pretty intently if someone said, "Oh, you you must have saw something else." It's like, oh no, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I was there, you weren't. So, <laughs> yeah, you know, um, um, you know, it's like uh, I was, you know, talking to my brother the other day. We were moving my mom back to Grant's Pass, Oregon, and. And he brought up that, you know, oh, I, he brought up that, you know, I was doing this whole Pack West Bigfoot thing and asked me about it and what's going on. And, and I was like, you know, I just kind of told about mom's experiences, what we found and then what happened to me. And, and he was like, you sure you guys didn't see bear that day? So I was like, dude, you were a little kid, man. You were in like, you know, freaking third grade. Dude. <laughs> like, you didn't know what's going on. Um, you know, we... You know, we saw what we saw. I mean, it was it was it was toe to heel. I had to do the splits just to get to, you know, from toe to heel, and and uh, it was just weird, man. It was just weird. They were footprints, and my my mom actually looked at my brother, and she's all, she she's all. It wasn't bear. She's all. I've seen bear a hundred times. She's all. These it was there was toes, five toes, in in the prints. So that's mm -hmm. kind of what happened there. So, yeah. Right. And the other thing I, I probably could add about my sighting is, is this underbrush was at minimum of four feet high. Mm. So basically he was squatted down in behind it. And, uh, you know, I, you know, I have been in the zoo before. I've seen some of these bears and, uh, they, they'd have to be up on their haunches to be able to get so high. And even yeah. then, the eyeballs were still along the side, and there was no ears on this dude I saw. So, uh, yeah, it's it's uh, interesting. Yeah, pretty surreal. 
Yeah. 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 Sorry, it could Weird, be man. more dramatic than that, but I'm glad it wasn't. No, 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 no. Like I said, I mean, most of us here really enjoy these kind of nice, short, little, little, like, um, they're almost, some of them are kind of like BFRO incidents you find on their channel, except for, you know, instead of two or three paragraphs. I mean, that's kind of why I went in and started yeah. creating the based on true stories with the short little, you know, descriptions. Like, you go to BFRO, you'll get like four or five paragraphs of something, and that's really it. You know, and mm -hmm. for me, it's like some of us, man, we want to hear the campfire story part of that. <laughs> we want to, want to hear that. We want to put us there, Dave. Put us there. And so that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to put us in that situation and through storytelling and uh, put us in that position or in that environment or in that situation uh, that they were in. Sure. Try my best through words and storytelling to do that. So, you know, and when I do these interviews, I mean, this is great. This kind of backs up what I do. You know, I may create the the backstory to this stuff, creatively speaking, but it's still based on true stories and true accounts, just like yours. And that's kind of why I do these these interviews, just to let people know that these are real people with real, you know, experiences. And uh, mm -hmm. sometimes it's just nice to get it off your chest, anyways. Sure, it. it is. And I've only had only had one other time where where I felt it was safe enough to to talk about. Uh, something of this order, and uh, oddly enough, the fellow I was talking to had uh, used to live in uh, Twain Heart, and uh, he had seen one crossing the highway once. And uh, huh. you know, Twain Heart what? seems to be uh, where is that at? Twain Heart. It's uh, it's along. Uh, I think about this. It's above Sonora, about oh, 15 minutes uh, east of Sonora. In Sonora, the, California. In the Nevada. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 That, yeah, oh, yeah, that whole, yeah. That whole yeah. area is huge. Yeah. Yeah. There's plenty of forest to hide in. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah. I was checking out. Uh, I think it was Shane the other day from the Olympia Project, and he had put up something. It might have been Shane. Maybe it was somebody else in the Olympia Project. But they put up this little map, and all of a sudden they were looking down towards Southern Oregon around here, and they're like, "Dude, we're kind of missing a hot spot here." recently we've actually had a lot of things uh -huh. happening over the last year or two here a lot of reports a lot of hmm. uh, uh i was at church one day and uh, a couple weeks ago and a guy came up to me he's all dude you're doing the bigfoot thing huh and it's like yeah yeah yeah. I was like i found prints and stuff like that and he's all he's all I, I i live way you know i live out of glide man and he's all i got some weird stuff sometimes that happens out of, off my property up the mountain and i was like mm -hmm. well you ever find anything he's all he's all i found impressions in the ground that were just huge and look look like human footprints he's all but you couldn't really it wasn't all there it was just impressions you know you know he's all you know how impressions are it's like you might be seeing something but gosh you know it just really looks like that but then he's like he's mm -hmm. all i found weird structures i've heard things things that are not coyote they're not mountain lion i hunt i fish i do all of that i've been here my life i was born and raised here these are things that um they're just very different very off and so he you know he was like if i he's all if you want you know i'm th i'm gonna take this up there and give it to him on a sunday and just have show him how to use it and just set it out maybe walk off about 100 yards off his property up that mountainside and just set it out there and see what we grab. So. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. He's got game trail cams and stuff like that. He's never caught anything on there. But then again, that's all for hunting and stuff. So, but I always tell people, it's like, you can do game. You can have, you can have a hundred thousand game trail cams around here. I tell just in the mountains around where I live, the likelihood of still find, seeing one on one of those is so remote. It's not even funny. You're taught, this is so fast. It's not even funny. People don't understand that. It's like, it's like people in their mind, they see these maps and books and stuff like that. And it's like, that's as big as it is. <laughs> it's this big. Well, your forest is like this. And it's like, dude, that forest yeah. like this is like half a million acres or, 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 or like, yeah. You know, 1500 square miles of forest just where I live, mm -hmm. you know, right. So, well, you know, and I have reason to believe that, that, uh, uh, I, I believe that the Bigfoot are pretty crafty, mm -hmm. you know, because for the most part, they stay pretty well hidden. 
Yeah. You know, I hear a lot of guys sitting in, in deer in deer uh, stands, you know, in a tree or something. And, yeah. you know, they, uh, they blend in or what have you and, and uh, they'll rock, walk up on them and, and so on. And you almost have to be hidden away to, to, to see one of these things or will come up like I, like I did. I surprised them. Yeah. Um, but that was a pretty des- desolate area where I was at. There wasn't a whole, there a lot of hillbillies out there, but they're all spread way out. <laughs> you know, and I use that term affectionately too, because there are some really good people up there. Yeah. Uh, but, on, awesome. but anyhow, but you like these BFRO guys are out there and, you know, there's, there's, you know, 10 or 12 of them, you know, stomping around they got these infrared lights. And if these, you know, if, anything nocturnal is probably going to see the infrared light. So it's, you might as well just run around with a police beacon on your head. Mm-hmm. You know, for me, uh, that's my thought about that. And, and, uh, yeah. uh, who knows, who knows why the Bigfoot will scream and yell, mm-hmm. you know, are, are they calling their kids in, you know, they past curfew, whatever. Hey, you know, time to come home. You know, you never really know, you know, why they're, they're screaming like this. And I've, you know, some guys, you know, they'll, come up on them and maybe it's kind of like, Hey, I'm bigger than you. And I'm going to, you know, <laughs> blow your house down and kind of just scream at somebody and yeah. never really know, you know, why they're screaming. And these guys, Oh, I'm going to, I'm going to make a call right now. Or, you know, Gosh, there's this, yeah, there's so <laughs> many different, different things, you know, so many different things, just, yeah. Newton, you know, until we really find one and get down there and, and all of that, um, I just don't think we're going to really, really know all the answers of why this or why that. I can understand tree knocks and whistles and whoops. Screaming, on mm-hmm. the other hand, I'm not sure about that. Maybe it's just a warning thing. Um, you know, it could be a million different re- mm-hmm. reasons for that. You know, the screaming, sure. I'm not really sure about. One of those things. Whistling, yeah. whoops, tree knocks. You know, location, location, location. They're like real estate agents. <laughs> <laughs> location yeah i am here and i'm yeah. hurting you this way um you know whatever it is so awesome yeah and the thing of it is if you're trying to stay hidden why not use a sound that you couldn't be identified with you know really it's kind of smart mm-hmm. yeah you know mm-hmm. uh we would use a walkie-talkie but you know that's maybe that's what they're doing that's their walkie-talkie yeah could be could yeah be. well very, thanks for very sharing all that man that's awesome dude that's You're awesome. Welcome. Nice. Yeah. Awesome. And happy cool. birthday to your mother. That's awesome. <laughs> 90. <laughs> Sweet. Yeah, June 3rd. Yeah. Nice. Nice. So, right on. All right. Well, um, yeah. thanks for being on here, man. And uh, hold on one second. You're welcome. For those of you guys listening in sure. here on PacWest Bigfoot, don't forget on the 11th, uh, actually this coming Monday, I'm going to announce the winner for this month. And from now on the 11th, every month I'm going to uh, do that. If you want to get in there and uh, get on, you know, you can just subscribe to PacWestBigfoot.com and get over there. Got free giveaways every month. Sometimes I give away awesome coffee and stuff from a good friend Gunner over at Sasquatch Coffee Company. And real quick, I don't get paid for any advertisement with him, but I want to let you guys know real quick. You can go over to SquatchCoffee.com. You can pick up the Bob Gimlin flavor. Uh, right now, the Bob Gimlin blend, and fifteen dollars of this is actually going to uh, Mr. Gimlin himself. And after all those years of giving to this community and everything else, I think it's kind of nice that we go out there and come on, guys. It's twenty-five bucks a bag, and I'm telling you, it's like the best coffee in the world. It tastes really good. So go get it, grab some, enjoy. God bless, and I will see you guys on the next Packwest Bigfoot interview.